Allah So I am so honored and privileged to be here today. So I'm going to ask from you to listen to me very carefully. There's a difference between hearing and listening. And if there's someone who you love who's not here today, I want you to absorb what I'm about to tell you and make sure that you share it with others. Is that a deal? Okay. So I know that a lot of you in this room felt the same way that I felt on election night. Sisters and brothers, I was feeling despair. I was so confused, I could not believe that we just elected a fascist, sexist, misogynist, Islamophobe, racist, corrupt, you name it, we did it. And I was feeling dis despair, and I've never felt that feeling of despair ever in my life. And then the next day, I started having another feeling. And that feeling was perpetual outrage. I was so outraged that we got ourselves into the situation. And I know that many people still feel anxious. We feel confused. Some of us may even be feeling afraid. Our children are also feeling confused, anxious about what could come and happen to our communities. The reason why, my dear sisters and brothers, is that we feel, feel anxious, or some of us feel anxious, is because we have not taught our young people their history in this country. We have Islamophobes who are propagating that Islam is a foreign religion that belongs on the other side of the world. There are people telling our children that they do not belong here. So our children are feeling like they are not home. And oftentimes at these conferences and in our Islamic schools and in our masajid, our leaders, our teachers are teaching us about the seerah of the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, teaching us to memorize Quran, which is very important. But what we are not teaching is a curriculum of history as American Muslims in these United States of America. Sisters and brothers, our young people need to know that Islam has been on these shores of these United States of America before this land was even called the United States of America, when it was still called the New World. We had Turks and Moors from North Africa who came here as expeditionists did you know that the first English colony, Roanoke Colony, that was built, was built by Muslim galley slaves? Roanoke Colony is now known to you as the coast of North Carolina. Sisters and brothers, when enslaved Africans were uprooted from Africa, and brought here as slaves to these United States of America, about 25 to 30 percent were Muslim. Now I want you to think about this for a second. Sisters and brothers, while we sit here afraid and we're talking about Islamophobia, and how Muslims are being treated here in the United States at this time. I want you to imagine for a second. How is it 
that enslaved African Muslims, some of whom were tortured, stripped from their families, had to work under strenuous circumstances, be deprived of basic human rights. How did those Muslims who endured more than you will ever endure, sometimes I think to myself, how did those enslaved people still believe after all that they have been through that there was still even a God? So I want you to understand when Sister Linda says that we must be unapologetically Muslim, I'm not asking you to be unapologetically Muslim. I'm telling you that you have absolutely no choice but to honor the legacy of those before you who sacrificed for you to sit in this room today and call yourself an American Muslim. This country, the United States of America, was built on the backs of enslaved Africans, some of whom were our ancestors. This country was built on the backs of immigrants, our great, great grandparents who came here from places like South Asia and the Middle East and Africa. So when people tell us or tell our children to go back to their country, our children should have the backbone and the information and the courage to say, this is my country and it was built by my ancestors and I deserve to live here just like anybody else. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, sometimes I come to conferences and I hear people say, we need to find a narrative. We need to tell a new American Muslim story. We need to change the narrative. I'm actually quite offended by that framework. You know why? Because we already have a story. We already have a narrative. Our black Muslim sisters and brothers have already etched your story out in history. You just have to learn to tell that story. Oftentimes we talk about the heroes and we talk about American Muslims who, alhamdulillah, were not just our heroes, they're everybody's heroes. And we talk about people like Malcolm X and Al Hajj Malik Shabazz. We talk about Muhammad Ali. The reason why I'm talking to you about enslaved Africans and those before is because we forget that sometimes there are unsung heroes before the heroes. There would be no Malcolm X or Muhammad Ali without those who sacrificed before them so they can become heroes for people all across the world. <laughs> heroes are born of heroes. I consider people who founded organizations like ICNA heroes. People who founded organizations like MASS and Islamic Relief and CARE and MLFA and all these wonderful organizations, I consider them to be our heroes. They built the infrastructure for us as Muslims to continue to stay connected to our deen in these United States of America. The question is, while people are continuing to build that infrastructure, what are you doing to continue that legacy here in these United States of America? Our story as American Muslims in this country, whether we were uprooted and forced to come here as enslaved Africans, or whether our story 
is that our families were fleeing persecution and war and conflict or fleeing poverty. Our story as American Muslims is one full of power and resiliency and struggle. So there is no reason, sisters and brothers, for us in this country to be ashamed of who we are, to apologize to anybody for who we are. If anything, it is us, American Muslims, who make these United States of America great. We make this country great. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, our opposition wakes up every morning committed to vilifying our community, to dehumanizing us. Our opposition wants us to cower to them. They want us to hide who we are. They want us to change our story so we can make them feel comfortable. I tell you, my dear sisters and brothers, and I ask you that in this country, we are not here to work towards acceptance. We are here to demand the respect that our communities deserve. Respect over acceptance. The only time our opposition should see us on our knees is when we are praying, sisters and brothers. We should never project fear in the face of our opposition. We have to show our opposition that our religion is one rooted in freedom, liberation, and justice for all people. When Muslims stand up and say justice, we mean justice for all people. We leave nobody behind. Sisters and brothers, we are taught in our deen that we only fear Allah. So if we only fear Allah, why would you be afraid of white supremacists, of Islamophobes, of Republicans, of Donald Trump? I am not afraid. What I'm saying to you here today is that we are a new generation, one that is a continuation of a legacy of resilience, pride, and power. You have a collective responsibility to continue the legacy of those that came before you. So I ask you, a hundred years from now, when none of us will be here on this earth or in this country. What kind of story are Muslims a hundred years from now gonna tell about us? Are we going to see Muslims a hundred years from now afraid to tell people that they are Muslim? What, I'm, what I fear, sisters and brothers, is I fear that a hundred years from now we will have sisters that will, who will not wear the hijab. That we will have masajid that are empty. That our children will not choose to go to Islamic school. That we will not give our children Islamic names. And I want you to imagine with me for a second Muslims having conversations about you. Imagine Muslims saying, what were those Muslims doing a hundred years ago? Why are we so afraid to be Muslim? Why didn't those Muslims stand up for our right to be Muslim in these United States of America? Why were those Muslims cowards? Why did they cower to the opposition? Sisters and brothers, the conversation that I want Muslims a hundred years from now to have about us 
is I want them to say, MashaAllah, those Muslims. They were courageous Muslims. They defended our right to be Muslim in these United States of America. It is because of the work of those Muslims, the courage of those Muslims, the commitment of those Muslims. It is because of the lack of fear, the courageousness that they showed in the face of opposition and adversary. It is because of those Muslims who lived in 2017 and 2018 and 2019. It is because of them that we are so proud to be Muslim a hundred years from now. That is the conversations that I want Muslims a hundred years from now to have about me and about you, my dear sisters and brothers. More importantly than the conversations that Muslims are going to have about us, the question is, how will you answer your Lord on the day of judgment when he asks you, what did you do to defend your beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What did you do to, perfect, to, to protect and defend your religion that was being vilified on the mainstream media by elected officials, by Islamophobes? What did you do when Islamic organizations were being attacked by the right wing? Did you defend those Islamic organizations? Did you defend the Muslim activists and our imams that are being vilified? What did you do to instill courage in your children so that they can be proud Muslims? My dear sisters and brothers, we will all be asked these questions. And I pray that Allah instills in all of us the moral courage to defend and stand up for our communities, for our masajid, for our organizations, the moral courage to defend our beautiful deen, to defend our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sisters and brothers, we as Muslims may not always get love from our fellow human beings or our fellow Americans. And we may be hurt by that sometimes. But first and foremost, we should be working for the love of Allah, not for the love of man or people. That's the first and foremost. That when we act, that our acts be accepted by Allah, not accepted by elected officials or by government agencies or by the President of the United States of America. That we never belittle ourselves in the eyes of Allah so we can please a man on this earth. So when you see some of us say that we will respect the presidency, but we will not respect this president of the United States of America. I will not, my dear sisters and brothers, ever respect an administration that won an election on the vilification, demoralization, and dehumanization of my Muslim sisters and brothers of my religion. Not me, sisters and brothers. I'm not having it. I understand that we have different philosophies in the Muslim community. But I want you to know that our young people watch our every move. And what I want young people to see in our community is I want them to see role models of courage. People who walk with their back straight, their head held high, and who are unapologetically Muslim. Because our children need those courageous moral figures now more than ever. And every day, my dear sisters and brothers, while our children may not get love in the world outside, they may not see love in the streets, in their college campuses, in their public schools, it is your responsibility as parents to tell your children that you love them, that you are proud of them, that they follow a beautiful religion, and that they are to be 
unapologetically Muslim every single day in your home and outside of your home. May Allah protect us because Allah is the best of protectors. We shall not put our protection in the hands of law enforcement, in the hands of our government, in the hands of anybody. Because in our deen, we know that Allah protects us. So may he protect you and your children. May he protect our Islamic organizations, our scholars, our imams. May he protect all of us living here in the United States of America. And may Allah protect our Muslim sisters and brothers in Muslim lands all across the world. Assalamu alaikum.